putting out giant phones, Apple's finally caved to the clear demand for enormous screens. And it turns out that an iPhone with a huge screen is pretty great. The iPhone 6 Plus is enormous. Although it's a similar size to the Galaxy Note 3, it feels bigger than the Samsung when you hold it. It's taller and thinner, and getting your hand all the way around it isn't easy. Between the size and the slippery curved aluminum edges, I'd prefer using it in Apple's leather case. This might be the first iPhone that's better in a case, actually. I'm not a big fan of the weird antenna lines and protruding camera lens on the back of the phone, and a case hides all those things nicely. Of course, the reason this thing is so big is the 5.5-inch 1920x1080 Retina HD display, which looks fantastic. It's the highest pixel density screen Apple's ever shipped on a phone, and it's definitely brighter and sharper than the previous Retina displays. It's not as super saturated as Samsung screens, but it looks far more accurate, especially when you're taking photos. Until apps are updated to support this bigger screen, you'll definitely see some fuzziness since the phone just makes everything about old apps bigger. Even the menu bar gets bigger, which makes it feel like you're using a phone for old people. Blown up apps look fine for the most part, but some get pretty fuzzy looking. Gmail is particularly bad. But I'd expect most software developers to update their apps relatively soon. But you don't need these updated apps to appreciate the screen right away. It's just so big and gorgeous, and browsing the web and watching videos on it is a joy. Video in particular is terrific. I watched a Packers game for a couple hours in the 6 Plus and never thought about switching to a TV. It's that good. Of course, watching video on any big screen phone is great, so it's up to Apple to figure out how to take better advantage of this new size that's in between an iPhone and an iPad. It's starting slowly. Apps that are updated for the bigger screen can take advantage of some new features that make the iPhone 6 Plus almost like a smaller iPad. There's a new two-column view in Landscape that shows you more information in various apps, and a new Landscape keyboard that includes arrow keys and dedicated cut, copy, and paste buttons. It's all very useful, even if the icon in this paste button is terrible. Seriously, this is awful. Come on. Once there are apps that take advantage of this new size properly, I can't see ever using my iPad Mini again. The iPhone 6 Plus is almost as big, has an awesome screen, and is also my phone, which is a huge advantage. And the iPhone 6 Plus battery seems to last forever. If you're a frequent traveler, the 6 Plus is a no-brainer. The 6 Plus also has a killer new camera, which is now so good I can't imagine ever using a point-and-shoot camera ever again. It's still 8 megapixels, but Apple's added what it calls focus pixels for faster focusing, and it really works. This thing takes pictures fast. You can also take 240 frames per second slow motion videos, which is awesome, and the 6 Plus has optical image stabilization, which makes it even better in low light than the iPhone 6. It's just an amazing little camera. But apart from the huge screen and terrific camera upgrades, the iPhone 6 Plus is still very much an iPhone. iOS 8 offers a wealth of new improvements to the basic experience of using an iPhone, but there's nothing drastically new here. Apple Pay looks like it will be the first successful mobile payment system ever, but it's not rolling out for another month.